Hello, hola, bonjour, hello, annyeonghaseyo, ni hao to all Saga fans all throughout the world. My name's Neil Broadley, I'm the localization director for the Saga franchise, and I am here today to chat with you a little bit about our upcoming title, Saga Emerald Beyond. But actually, um, I've got my green scarf here to kind of celebrate Saga Emerald Beyond, so I'm going to kind of rock this look throughout the rest of the time here, because I think it's good, be beyond brand, beyond brand. And actually, I'm here today not just to chat with you, I'm here to show you a little bit about Saga Emerald Beyond, Da, 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 because we have a Let's Play going on. I've got my controller here, and I'm going to show you a little bit about Saga Emerald Beyond. Um, if you remember back during Glimmerfest in December of last year, I promised that even though we couldn't do a Let's Play during the Glimmerfest, that we wanted to do one for you on a later date in January or February. And it is now February, so as promised, we're going to do our little Let's Play. So let's take a look. Let's go to Saga Emerald Beyond. Let's get started. We got the title screen right here in front of us. Press any button to continue. So I shall press any button to do this button. So I've got a monitor right here in front of me. So if I'm not looking into the camera, it's because I have to pay attention to the monitor. This game is fun, but I do have to pay attention because I'm not exactly, you know, some kind of video game maven. I kind of have to fumble my way through things too. But let's take a look together, okay? So let's load, let's roll. We got Mr. S down there in the corner. He's thinking, he's glimmering. We got it all, we got it all, everybody. Here we go. So as you can see, here we are in the junction. This is kind of the world in between worlds. Um, if you remember, Saga Emerald Beyond has 17 different worlds for you to explore. And which world you go to is partially decided by the game and partially up to you. Um, if you can see in the upper right hand corner, there's a button that says scan. If we press the square button, we'll be able to scan and we'll be able to see where we can go. So let's take a look. Here we go. And da -da, as you can see, the emerald green lines are leading to portals. And here we've got Tsunanori talking to one of his companions, Lita Carrix. So Lita goes, what's wrong? You seem bothered. And, you know, I'd be bothered too if I had these little green lines coming out of nowhere. Well, I was expecting the emerald wave to show me two strands, but I'm seeing three. Third one's red is all get out, too. Sounds like a warning to me. Sure does. Where I'm from, red means you should stop because there's something bad up ahead. And yes, red generally does mean bad. That's not a good thing. So I guess you either ignore distractions in order to fulfill your mission or give in to curiosity and explore an unknown door. Hmm, so we got a bunch of choices we can make here. Which door do we go down? Well, let's see what else these people have to say. Hmm, <laughs> fate sure seems to enjoy playing games with you, huh? Hey, quit poking fun. I've seriously got no idea what to do here. Well, yeah, you're not exactly sure what's what. So we got three different doors we can go to. Door of combat, a truly grueling battle awaits beyond this door. And we've got one exclamation point here. All the doors look the same. Although faint, you can sense the power of a fire spirit. And then three exclamation points, we've got another door. All the doors look the same. Although faint, you can sense the power of a water spirit. So I guess we got our choices. Um, the door of combat, this is basically just to engage in a battle without too much context going on. The red doors are battle scenes that take place in the game and you can do them to kind of, you know, increase your attributes, try to glimmer some techniques, stuff like that. And then the green ones are where story events occur. So we're gonna explore a story event. We're gonna see where these doors take us. Um, I guess we'll go to the one with one exclamation point first. We'll see exactly where that takes us. So let's roll, let's go here. And we got Mr. S's are kind of hanging out here on the left-hand side. I wonder what they're doing here. I guess we'll probably have to find out a little bit later. Um, and as you can see, the exclamation point tells us where the door I chose is. So let's just take a little walk here. We can kind of swing the camera around freely. We can take a look around the junction. We see all these little doors and pillars hiding all over the place. And these are all the different worlds you can go visit. But we made our choice. So let's just kind of mosey on down here. You know, Tsunanori's got to get his cardio in. You got to make sure to exercise take those 10,000 steps a day. I do that, you should do that too, by the way. You should try to take 10,000 steps every day. Very good for your health. Let's roll. Door of the heavens. All the doors look the same. Although faint, you can sense the power of a fire spirit. And open the door. So let's open the door and see where we end up. We got a little movie showing the door opening. There's a bright light, go into the light. And we go into the light and we find ourselves Oh, who's this? It's our favorite little goth girl. Look at that. I beseech you, O Dismal King, return life to my master in exchange for my body's blood. Oh boy, she's really landing on thick here, isn't she? Let's see what happens here. 
and bam, out we pop. There we are. Look at her. I think you might have seen this screenshot. We took this screenshot uh, pretty early on and shared it with you. So this might be familiar if you've seen some of our previous coverage. Cripes, that door weighed a ton. Thought I'd never get out of there. Well, it looks like I'm in a boneyard and I guess that heavy door was a tombstone? Heck, what kind of door connects to a grave? Wise words. My master lives once more. All hail the dismal king. I, Dolores, swear here and now that we shall see you restored. So evidently Dolores thinks that uh, he's an important person in this world. That's a good question. We'll see what's going on here. I see your head has found its way back upon your shoulders, master. Also, you seem to have been restored to a younger self. More blessings from the dismal king, to be certain. So evidently we died in a previous incarnation, and now we are back. So that's wonderful. It's always good to be risen from the dead. Now rest easy, for I, Dolores, shall serve you as we work to restore the dismal king himself. Nice, we're going to restore a king. Sorry, but who are you? And who's this king fella? Goodness, it seems this resurrection has left your memory scrambled. But worry not, for I, your loyal servant Dolores, will aid you with anything and everything your heart desires. Now that's what I like. I like a servant who knows, you know, we got to serve the master. That's good. Good. Let's go. Let's go. Appreciate it. So my name's... Oh, how strange is it for you to introduce yourself to me, Master? Well, if we want to get your memories back, we've no choice but to retrace your steps. And while I understand you're being hesitant to remember the moment you were brutally beheaded, there's, um, not really another option. Sorry. Cripes, this lady really thinks I'm her dead master. Can't believe I look much like the guy, but eh, why sweat the details? Let's just see how this plays out. Time to get going then, we're off to the dark castle. Lead the way. And so this world that we're in is called the world of Yomi, and it's one of the 17 worlds of Saga Emerald Beyond. And as you can see, one of our main characters that we're being introduced to here is Dolores. And Dolores is a maid. Uh, she's kind of a servant in this world. And she is under the impression, whether falsely or correctly, that the protagonist is her master. And Dolores' goal is to get the, get the Dismal King resurrected. Something happened to the Dismal King and then to put him back together again. And Dolores' master, Tsunanorti, is evidently in Dolores' mind the key to making this happen. So now we're in the world and we can explore. But as usual, when we don't know what to do, we press the scan button and see where that takes us. So run around in a circle, scan, do 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 do. And we've got one line to the sealed castle. So this one is blue. Basically, there are three colors to the doors. There's blue, green, and red. Red is where battles occur. Blue is where kind of a side quest or a non-main quest occurs. And green is where the main quests occur. So this is kind of a little side adventure we're going on here right now. So it's telling us to go to the sealed castle. This building towers into the sky in the center of Yomi. It is home to this world's ruler, the Dismal King. The entrance is sealed. So I guess let's go, and evidently we need some keys. And I wonder what that's all about. I guess we'll find out as we go along. So let's go to the sealed castle. And as you can see, there are a whole bunch of other locations here. We can't go to them now, but if we approach them, we can see that there's a bunch of little lore explanations going down on the bottom. So we can see exactly what's the deal with this world? What are all these places? We got a bunch of different watchtowers. And over here, there's a dark well. I wonder what that leads to. Hmm. I guess we'll find out later. But anyway, let's just keep going. We'll go to the sealed castle and see exactly what goes on here. But I kind of like this aesthetic this aesthetic we have here in Yomi. Don't you like it? It's kind of like this black and dark purple. It's a really, you know, really grim vibe going on here. I guess if you're a dismal king, you like your places to be this kind of, you know, dark aesthetic. So it fits really well with what the dismal king is going for. Nice job. So the sealed castle. This building towers into the sky in the center of Yomi. It is home to this world's ruler, the dismal king entrance is sealed. So let's explore. As you can see, we've got Dolores in the little picture here. And in these little doors, uh, the person in the picture is a main character in whatever event is going to unfold. So we know that Dolores is going to be important in this event that unfolds. So let's take a look. So this is the Dark Castle, eh? Oh, Dismal King, thank you for returning my master to me. I beg of you, please wait just a little longer that we might see you restored to your former glory once more. Seems like some kind of seal, maybe? 
This is the castle seal. We can see that there are four different colors kind of on the outside of the, the big diamond in the middle. And there's a big open diamond in the middle, which evidently that must be the seal. And I wonder if those keys that we saw earlier kind of in the bottom right hand corner are related to this, this seal going on here. But we can't do anything with it now, so let's just see what the deal is. Bet it'll bust wide open if we put something here. Correct, Master. Each of the four wardens of the watchtowers has hidden a key. Keys you died trying to acquire. Uh, do you remember that? We can see here there's the four towers that we kind of walked by on our way to the dismal castle here, the sealed castle. Well, cripes, I'm getting bad vibes from the, just from the towers. Don't even want to think about what their wardens might be like. Oh boy, things are going to get hairy. They are all terrible louts to the last. So while we must get the keys from them, we should avoid any head-on clashes. Good thinking. You know, wardens probably sound pretty powerful. You don't want to take them head-on. I kind of agree with that logic. So think before we act, basically. Sounds like a good way to be. And now we have our choices. Lust's Extreme, Gluttony's Extreme, The Flames of Wrath, and Sloth's Extreme. So there are four different choices for where we can go to. So we've got Lust, Gluttony, Wrath, and Sloth. So as you can see, these are kind of themed after the seven deadly sins, right? Mmm, where should we go? Well, there are a lot of different options, and unfortunately, I would like to go to all of them, but we don't have time to go through all of them today. And of course, we don't want to spoil too much of the story for you, so I think we'll leave you there, and we'll go to our next portion of the show that we want to show you, a little bit of uh, one of the battle scenes that's going on. So let's cut it right here, and we'll, we'll load into the next battle. So let's roll. We'll go back, and enjoy the story when it comes out. It's going to be a lot of fun to go through. This world in particular is quite fun. Okay, so let, let's load what's going on here. We're going to go to the correct data this time. We're going to go to this particular one right here. I think you can't see this on screen because we don't want to, we don't want to spoiler things too much for you. But let's load the next battle and see what's going on. The next, next world we're going to. We're not going to get into the world a little bit too much. We just want to show you a battle. So we're going to show you a battle in this particular world. And there's a story thing here, but we're going to skip past the story. We're just going to skip the story here so we don't spoil anything for you. And this will bring up a whole bunch of other windows, a bunch of doors, a bunch of visions you can see here. And we're going to go to one of the battles. These red ones are all various battles going on in the game. And we can set like a target marker if we want to go to one in particular, or we can just explore the map and see whichever one we stumble upon. Uh, we're going to go to one of, one of these. I think we'll go to this one. So I'm going to show you a little bit of a battle, and before I get into the battle, let me just tell you, um, I, I do localization for this game. I am not a battle designer, I'm not a battle planner, I am a complete scrub when it comes to playing video games. I enjoy them, but I kind of suck. So if I fail at the battle, please accept my apologies, but I'm going to do my best. Uh, I've been told we're doing an easy battle, so that should be good enough for my skills. So let's roll. Going to go to this door here and see what kind of battle we got going on. Let's roll. It's an easy battle, so that's good enough for me. Here we go. As you can see, we kind of got the difficulty there is easy. We see the difficulty on the right hand side. You can see the enemies that we're facing and then the rewards that you can get. Um, before each battle, you can go into the combat preparation screen. I won't show you that today. Um, and you can kind of prepare your retinue, you know, make sure you have the right weapons equipped, see if there's anything you want to change in your formations or anything like that. And then engage to start the battle. So let's start the battle. Here we go. I love the battle system in this game, it's awesome. So, Time for a little as you can see right here, we got this kind of timeline down here. Uh, we call it the timeline. This is kind of the action order for what's going on. So uh, in Saga Emerald Beyond, just like in Saga Scarlet Grace before it, you can see what abilities your enemies are going to use. You can't see who they're targeting, but you can see what they're going to use. So you can kind of plan out uh, how you want the battle to go. As we can see, this one's defending. We got a couple different uh, abilities being used here. And if you see, there's like, uh, as you select a character, there's little green bars that appear under them. And these are kind of the united attack range, we kind of call it. And one of the features of the battle system in this game is that characters who act close together by connecting these green lines can unleash a combo attack known as a united attack. And that's one of the fulcrums around which the game turns. Um, these 
this timeline, there's a bunch of different uh, actions you can take depending on what abilities you have. And as you can see, Lita's order in the timeline is kind of adjusting depending on what things she chooses, what ability she chooses to use. And you can use this to manipulate your position in the order, and you can also manipulate your enemy's positions in the order as well. As you can see, Brusque Slice, it says delay one. That means the enemy that it hits, they'll be bumped back one in the timeline. So if I choose Brusque Slice, and I want to attack this enemy here, for example, he'll be pushed back, and then Tsunanori will act before him because he'll get pushed back by one, because it has delay one. And then we've got a whole bunch of other allies here. We got Lita Carex is our, she's our witch. She's got a spell. She's got her two weapons. She's got her one-handed sword and her two-handed sword. I guess it's a pole arm she has equipped. And then we've got our Kugutsu, our Kugutsu puppets. Um, if you're familiar with previous entries in the Saga franchise, uh, one of the ways you learn new techniques is something called a glimmer. And glimmering a new technique is you automatically learn a new technique at random when something happens in battle. And if you're lucky, you can earn a lot of new techniques really quickly. Um, in Saga Emerald Beyond, your ability to learn new techniques is partially linked to how difficult the battle is. So we probably won't be learning any new techniques today. We won't be glimmering any new techniques today. Um, maybe if we get lucky, we will. But the Kugutsu have kind of like a different spin on that. The Kugutsu, they don't learn techniques by themselves. They can mimic techniques that other party members have learned already, that some of their other retinue members have learned. So, for example, uh, this Kugutsu here, Bo, he uses a gun. So if someone uses a gun technique that he doesn't know, he has a chance of learning that ability from him. It's called mimicking. And then, way down here at the end, we have Administrator Gold. He's a mech. Uh, he's one of the allies that can join your retinue uh, throughout the course of the story. And mechs kind of work on a different combat system. I won't get into that too much today. I want to save that for kind of a later date. But mechs basically learn different abilities based on what equipment they have. And we can talk a little bit about that in a later video. Uh, but just keep that in mind as we go forth. Um, so yeah, so I said that one of the keys to succeeding in battle in, in uh, Saga Emerald Beyond is by linking together your unit's abilities, your retinue member's abilities. So I guess we'll just kind of go down the line. As you can see, we've got four stars. Uh, these stars represent the number of action points we have in combat. And the number of action points you have depends on what formation your characters are in. And some formations start with more, some start with fewer. And the conditions by which you earn more stars uh, also depends on the formation. So some formations, every turn you get a star. Sometimes you get more stars as you perform certain abilities or certain things happen in combat. And formations are basically the fulcrum around which you plan your strategy, essentially. Some of them have passive effects, some of them have active effects. Um, it's basically one way that you can customize your battle tactics to suit your needs or to suit whatever challenges you're facing. So I guess, uh, let, let's, let's, let's just choose some of the things here, let's go. So we'll go with Brusque Slice here, it moves Lita back one in the order. And like I said, we'll target this, this little snake friend over here so that Sinanori acts before him. And as you can see, she's got two little green lines underneath her. That means that any allies acting in that range will perform a united attack with her. So let, let's get a united attack going on. Um, as you can see here, oh, this one has three. That's pretty nice. This one has a stun and a quell. So this can actually uh, counter some conditional techniques that are used. There are also interrupts. Um, an interrupt is a conditional technique that is used whenever an enemy uses an ability that triggers it. So as you can see by the little snake guy, he's highlighted, there's a little slashing icon above him. That means that quick shot will interrupt that technique and it will be performed before that in the action order. So if, for example, there's an enemy who's acting earlier, you can interrupt their attack and kind of attack before it instead. But let's save that for a little bit later. We're gonna go with the united attack first and that's kind of the fulcrum around which the battle turns. So I guess we'll go with stunning shot, which has a chance to stun. So maybe we'll be able to stun this guy and stop him from attacking too. I like not taking damage, I don't know about you. And we've got one more action point left, so we can't use these abilities that take up two, three, etc. But we can use one of our lesser action abilities. And as you can tell, we only had four stars to start with, but we have five allies. So the allies that don't attack will actually defend. If you don't attack, you automatically enter a defensive stance and take less damage. So as you can see here, we've assigned our last ability. If we're ready to go, we can just engage and attack. And as you can see, we've got our three allies lined up in front there, our three retinue allies in front, and they're gonna form a united attack. So let's see what happens.
Here we go. Can you follow this? And as you can see, we've got Brusque, Stunning, and Nate. As you can see, the uh, the United Attack names are named after uh, combinations of the names of the various abilities used to trigger them. And one of the cool things about the Saga franchise is that these are these are not dynamically, they're kind of dynamically generated based on a pre pre-input list into the game. And kind of seeing what monstrosities you can create with your United Attacks is one of the fun things about this game, personally. So we did a lot of damage. We took him down to about half. Um, as you can see here, this little friend down here has a question, question, question mark under him. That means that we don't know what he's doing. He's preparing a conditional tech. And a conditional tech is an attack that doesn't automatically fire, but it fires off if its triggering condition is met. So for example, maybe if we attack him, maybe he has a counterattack technique, and if we attack him, he'll counterattack. Or maybe he's got an interrupt, he's trying to interrupt one of our abilities, one of our retinue allies' abilities, and we don't know exactly what's going on. Um, as you play through the game, you'll start to learn, you know, which enemies have what kind of abilities and what you can do to counter them. But if you remember, we had something called a quell. As you can see here, sharp shot is what's called a quell. And a quell will kind of cancel a, a conditional technique. So for example, if we use sharp shot on this guy here, then he won't trigger his conditional attack as long as the attack takes place after the quell. So if Lita acts first and triggers his conditional tech, sharp shot won't really matter because he'll already have fired off the attack. I mean, he'll still take damage, but it won't actually stop the attack. So let's kind of leave Lita uh, in the holster, so to speak, and we'll have some of our other other allies go instead. Uh, I want to show you some mech tech. So let's see, water cannon is pretty good. Water cannon is also a quell. That's pretty neat. Uh, sparkling mist. Sparkling mist decreases speed. It hits all allies, so that's pretty cool. Or all enemies, rather, so that's pretty neat. But we don't want him to act before sharp shot because we don't want to risk triggering the conditional technique. So let's see what Sinonori's got. Eliminate, cutting lunge makes him go faster. Brusque Slice. Parry is a protect. It can kind of protect him from attacks, so to speak. Uh, knee Split. That one has a stun, but again, we want to move after Sharp Shot, so let's not do that. Um, uncouth Assault. Uh, that delay won't help out too much because he's going to be acting at the end. Uh, what do we do here? I guess I'll just show you Quad Missile. This is a nice, nice beefy attack that's going on. So let, let's see what that happens. Let's see what happens when we do that. Here we go. It attacks all enemies, which is super cool. Here we go. Blocked. He was defending, that's why he takes less damage. There's a buff going on there, speed up. Another united attack. And as you can see, there's a combo rate at the top of the screen. Uh, if the combo rate exceeds 150%, there's a chance for an overdrive, which is basically a united attack after a united attack. Um... We got another conditional tech, but this time Bo's acting really fast. Um, as you can see, he's got blue stars now instead of yellow stars. In this particular formation that uh, our retinue is in, if you perform a united attack, the performing characters get a BP discount. So now, for this turn, all of his techs are discounted by one BP. And I guess uh, that's one of the things in this formation why you really want to get as many united attacks as possible to kind of decrease the cost of your heavy hitting abilities so you can use them more frequently. So let's go. Let's try to, let's, let's get rid of this, this conditional attack and then let's kill this snake before he can attack us. That would be ideal. Um, let's see. Oh, as you can see, Quad Missile now only casts three. Cost three instead of four. So that's pretty neat. Um, you know what? Let's just go with another activity. We'll go, we'll go here. We'll go to Crunch. Kill this crunching guy. Um, this one inflicts poison, but we kind of want to kill him, so we don't want to do poison on someone who's going to be dying anyway. So let's just go with Cutting Lunge, see what happens there. And then Nordi, we want to make him in the United Attack as well. I'm going to see if we can trigger an Overdrive, so you can see what an Overdrive looks like. Let's see if we can get them all going. So I'll go with Nordi here, and then that uses up all our BP for the round. So here we go, let's see how the battle plays out. Huh? So am I first here? Water cunning stunning lunge. Nice. Oh, he died. As you can see, our combo rate is really, really high. It's over 200%. Work for me. And over 200%, it's a guaranteed overdrive. Easy peasy. 
Well, that was just disgusting. Okay. And as you can see, sometimes it just be like that and you just wipe the floor with the enemies if you trigger an overdrive and everything. So that was, that was our battle. And that's kind of what battles look like in Saga Emerald Beyond. As you can see, there's a lot of strategy. You kind of have to manipulate your order on the timeline to get your united attacks. And of course, enemies can also do united attacks too. So you have to be really careful to make sure that your characters are placed properly. Um, if you played Saga Scarlet Grace, you might remember that the way that United Attacks worked in that game was if the action order was altered and kind of crunched allies or enemies together, that's how United Attacks were triggered. But in this battle, it's a lot less kind of subject to randomization and a lot more control in your hands about how you trigger those United Attacks. And of course we win and we get prizes for winning because everyone loves prizes. This is no dream. And of course, as is usual in the Saga franchise games, your attributes have a chance to increase after battle. And we got the same six attributes that we did in Saga Scarlet Grace. And that's what a battle looks like. So that kind of uh, concludes what I wanted to talk to you all about today for Saga Emerald Beyond. Um, yeah, we got a lot more videos coming up. This is just a quick let's play that I promised you that we would do after Glimmerfest last year. And um, yeah, this is just one of many videos we're going to be releasing over the next couple months uh, in the lead up to the launch of Saga Emerald Beyond. And remember, Saga Emerald Beyond uh, releases on April 25th, 2024. And yes, so just a few months from now, just a little over two months from the time you guys are seeing this video. So I hope you enjoyed this look into Saga Emerald Beyond, and we hope you'll stick with us for future videos. Follow me on Twitter. I started a Twitter account last month. You can see the link down in the description below. And make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, like the video, and yeah, stay tuned for more Saga Emerald Beyond goodness. So this is Neil signing off for today. Bye, everybody.